One benefit of being Jamstack is that you're basically the first consumer of your own set of APIs. And once you have one consumer, you can pretty easily spread to more. So if you have a web app, you can spread to a mobile app, to a desktop app, to a CLI, and so on and so on and so on. And Netlify is no exception. Netlify itself is Jamstack and Netlify.com is hosted on Netlify.com. So in this section, we're going to be taking a look at how to make your own Netlify client. And the best way to learn that is to look at the documentation and also to look at other clients that have already been implemented. And you, then you can implement a Netlify client for whatever purposes that you need. If something that we do is not working for you, you can make your own. So the first place to see this in action is app.netlify.com. This is always sort of the first class consumer of Netlify's APIs. And one way to tell is to go to the page and hit the network tab and just check out all the API responses that have been called. You can filter for XHR over here. And you can see that we're hitting, for example, like a site's endpoint with some parameters. And then that gets back the responses that are then displayed here, as well as notifications. Then when you enter a site, you get some notifications of deploys as well. So you get deploys. This is the options ping. Let's look at the get result. And yeah, you can see all the deploy preview stuff that's happening over here and so on and so forth. There's a lot that's happening uh, and they're all done through an API and therefore pretty transparent to uh, anyone who wants to use them for other purposes. You should note that there are authentication head tokens that you, that you might want to forward, and this would be located in your Nullify Identity JWTs. Now that you know that the API exists, probably the best way to learn more about it is to check out the documentation. These are, this is available on the official docs itself, and you can check out links for Go and JavaScript API clients. Um, and it's got some information about rate limiting, pagination, and in particular, if you want to write your own deploy methods, um, you should read some of these information to help you figure out how to deploy large zip files and folders of files. Form submissions that you programmatically retrieve form information, so you can retrieve that within a function, for example, and then reference it in your page itself, so it's not a write-only form. And there are other ways to trigger webhooks and and retrieve files themselves without actually serving uh, the without actually serving that URL. The official API itself follows the Open API spec and therefore has a programmatically generated documentation page as a standalone. And you can actually access this information in a structured manner together with some sample response shapes, so you can actually code faster for whatever use cases that you're thinking of. Another good client to look at is the CLI for Netlify or Netlify Dev. So this is the CLI that you've been using. It's completely open source, which also means that you can also check out how to do certain things within the CLI and use them in your own uh, Netlify client. The Netlify CLI is built on top of the Oakleaf framework from Salesforce and Heroku. Uh, therefore, there's a bunch of commands that are all located between here, and each of these are the commands that you run, including certain flags. For example, Netlify functions create, uh, that would invoke some flags over here. Um, but you can also look at, for example, the source code for Netlify deploy, and that's just a single file. And you can see how the CLI uses the this.netlify and this.authenticate instances to do things like getting sites and deploying and and deploying the sites and displaying the status of them. So all this wiring up between the CLI and the Netlify API happens off screen and it may be a little hard to find. So I'm just gonna do you the favor of pointing you directly at the Netlify CLI utils. So this is a separate package because it's used in multiple places. In the CLI utils, that basically links up the JS client, which is the JavaScript layer over the Go client for Netlify. And it wraps it inside of a Oakleaf base command. And all of this is probably foreign to you right now, but 
it will be helpful if you need to dive into the code. But basically, we export a base command here, and we add on all the methods, like the authentication method that you saw us use earlier. We attach the Netlify instance by, init by initializing and then attaching it onto that command's instance. So this library is useful for reusing the same login credentials on the machine for multiple clients. So if you're logged in on the CLI as well as desktop and so on, and you're not asked to log in multiple times. But if you want to go down to the lowest level of JavaScript dependency, uh, definitely check out the JS client library. And this is the lowest level library that uh, lets you do everything imperatively, but doesn't take care of access token usage for you. Some nice community clients that you can definitely check out as well. There's a menu bar app from Stefan Judas. This is the one I personally use. So if you click over here, you can actually see the reported incidents that have been happening recently. You can check out the different sites that you're managing and uh, be notified of the deploys. You can toggle to different deploys or trigger a new deploy. You can set uh, different settings for the, for the app. And all in all, a very nice utility to have to give you notifications of when apps are deploying and updating. So that's a brief tour of the Nellify API. You're definitely welcome to use it and uh, get in touch with us if you need some help on something that doesn't make sense. And we are interested in working with people to build uh, more stuff. Like uh, All of this is open source for a reason, and we're happy to work with people to do more things with Netlify. For example, a lot of people install the Netlify CLI as part of their continuous deployment process, like they have their own continuous deployment uh, tool chain and pipeline, and then they use Netlify CLI to just deploy the final build assets. But they don't really need it if they understood the lower level tools, or they could just build their own tools to do other things that they wish they could do. So Netlify API is the ultimate low level flexible interface if the interfaces that we have is preventing you from building and doing the stuff that you want to do.